Hello, my name is Nehemiah. I know it says Brother Shane up there, but trust me, for today, my name is Nehemiah. I am an Israelite, and I lived a long, long time ago. When I was born, Israel wasn't a free country. Many years before, the Babylonians had come and conquered the capital city of Jerusalem. All right. I, I know they kind of look like zombies, uh, but let's just pretend that they're Babylonians, all right? It's really hard to find an ancient Israel Babylon mod for Minecraft. Yeah, let's go. I'm fired up and I don't give a heck. My name is Julian Watkins. I'm going to be uh, in charge for the afternoon class, and uh, I'm joined by uh, Rev, Josh, Mandy. On the count of three, I want you all to say hello at the same time. One, two, three. Hello. And that's a game plan right there, son. Net, swish, sports references. <laughs> We're here. We're going to get down to uh, something. I'm uh, I'm a little uh, tired myself. I've been up since 2.30. How about you, Josh? What are you? I am just Josh. <laughs> Yes, and we all know Mandy's just glorious. Her fandies are just multiplying by the minute. And rightly so. She's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me get an update. What's going on with Shovel Knight? The uh, <laughs> the Reverend has been has been texting and saying like, "Oh, hey, I just beat this boss. I just beat this boss." And so because I'm like competitive by nature, I was like. You know what? Fuck that. I'm gonna beat this game. <laughs> and so I like plowed through it and I, I finally I did beat Shovel Knight the other night. So I have ADHD. I've I've mentioned that in the podcast before. And sometimes I will just hyper focus on something and like that's where all my attention is. Since I got Shovel Knight, I have not even loaded up Skyrim. So like that's that's how much, you know, I'm playing Shovel Knight right now. I haven't beaten it yet, but I did get to the tower entrance. And, you know, I stopped playing last night because the tower entrance is fucking difficult. It really is. It's, it's, it's super fucking hard. But that's so that's where I'm at. And probably when I get home, I will uh, either play Shovel Knight or sleep, depending on what happens. Or play Shovel Knight in your sleep. Or play Shovel Knight in my sleep. It wouldn't be the first time I have dreamt about playing video games. Mm -hmm. I do that quite often. The Witcher 3 was like a recent game that really, it's one of those games you think about a lot. After you finish playing it, you know, or um, just find yourself thinking about it randomly throughout the day, like, oh, I wonder if I could do that, or, oh, that one quest, that reminds me of something. And speaking of The Witcher 3, I did manage to acquire all of the Gwent cards in, in The Witcher 3. Oh, nice. You got the collect them all mission? I did. Nice. I got, the, I got the mission and I popped the trophy. Wow. I ended up uh, finding a checklist, and there were four cards I was missing. And all four of them were at one vendor, way out in the in kind of the middle of nowhere in Skellige. He's only available at certain times of the day and yada, yada, yada. And so he was the only one I missed. And once I found him and bought all of his cards, everything popped. Yeah. I think at this point, my best bet is to just finish the game, um, start over on Game Plus, and then just try to track down and keep an accurate list and do it that way. Oh, also a, a listener called out Julian for uh, saying there's no platforming in The Witcher 3 on our on our previous episode. And it's funny because as soon as that episode aired, I was like running around in Skellige and I was out in like climbing this mountain mm -hmm. and there was like this mountain path that was like eroded and I had to do a bunch of like yeah. legit platforming stuff. Yeah, leap jumping and... Yeah, so I just I wanted to point that out. Whatever your name is, I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> but the hot game right now, Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain, and it is controlling my life, Josh. Yeah, I, same here. I I spent eight hours a night. It was, just, it was just like my life. It was if if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you know that uh, on episode four, I proclaimed Metal Gear Solid Three is my favorite game of all time. So when Metal Gear Solid Five came out, it was like I need to play this. Like I don't care that Konami's a shitty company and yada yada yada. Like I'm I'm going to pay sixty dollars and I'm going to play this. Well, that's what they were counting on. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Absolutely. I had beaten the game and I found this article on IGN that was like a hundred cool things you might not have known about Metal Gear. 
And it gave you all these tips like, oh, did you know you can sit in the cardboard box and slide down a hill? And it's like, no, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> I, put I have to go do that. I put 100 hours in this game and I've never slid down a hill in a box. I need to, to do that. Mm-hmm. Or like, I didn't realize that you could play it cassettes and, and it would have in-game effects. Like, you can get the all clear sound in, in various languages. Mm-hmm. And if you play the right language, the guards will get confused because they, they hear all clear and they're like, oh, wait, okay. And so even after you've alerted the guards, you can trick them into thinking that they looked for you and didn't find you. That's actually legitimately neat, especially in a game that focuses on stealth the way Metal Gear Solid or the Metal Gear series does. Mm-hmm. One of the coolest things that I haven't been able to, to pull this off successfully in the game yet. One of the coolest tips that I learned um, from that article was that you can plant C4 on a tank, you can fault in it. And you can blow up a helicopter mm-hmm. if you <laughs> explode the C4 too close to a helicopter. Like, that's so cool. I think that's the thing that, that players in, in a lot of games would eventually get around to experimenting with. But I don't think it's a thing that would typically work. Like, oh, I wonder if that works. And then it wouldn't. But in, in Metal Gear Solid Five, it does work. And that's super cool. It's it's ridiculously difficult to pull off unless you, like, you know, kind of memorize the helicopter path and mm-hmm. time it just perfectly and stuff. But you can pull it off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've only been on one mission so far where there's a gunship, but there weren't any tanks and I couldn't fault on them anyways because I'm not that strong. The faultoning thing is, is just something I'm obsessed with. And it, you can eventually upgrade your Fulton device. Like the Fulton is is this balloon. And so when you see something that you want in the game, you can steal it by attaching a balloon to it and it floats up into the air. And then I guess you must have like some kind of reconnaissance helicopter that comes and picks it up and yeah. delivers it back <laughs> to your base. But like you can upgrade your Fulton device to the point where there's big shipping crates lying around full of materials and you, you know, you see one and you attach a balloon to it and it just goes up and it's yours. Mm-hmm. And eventually it, you can get tanks. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I want that tank. And then you just stick a balloon on it and it goes up into the air and that tank is yours. And then later on you can you can deploy the tank and drive okay, around. You can fold in tanks too for like cars that people are on. My friend Delaney, yesterday on Facebook, she put a video of her sneaking up behind a car with four people in it and faltoning it with them still in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and they'll they'll end up being recruited. Are there ever guys that you take that aren't recruited? Yeah, I mean, there's on your base you've got a sick bay and you've also got the brig, mm-hmm. and so a lot of the guys, especially as you get you know deeper into the game, a lot of the guys go straight to the brig. And so you got to kind of like rough them up a bit mm. before they join you. Mm-hmm. But right, like, let's kidnap some people, then beat them up, and yeah. then they'll be happy to work for yeah. us. So, so the general the general lore behind the game, and like this actually works. Like they created they created a lore that actually makes this work. Is that uh, inspired by the successes of Big Boss in the uh, the Snake Eater and Peace Walker missions? All of these like you know renegade militias have started forming, like mm-hmm. militias for hire. And they really see Big Boss as like their influence, their mm-hmm. inspiration. They're like, this guy, you know, yeah, this guy figured it out. They mentioned that. Yeah, they're like, this guy figured it out. He's great. But uh, because in Ground Zeroes, he went down in a crash and was, was in a coma, uh, everyone just assumes he's dead. Like, he's like, they're kind of like this martyr figure. Mm-hmm. But so once they realize he's still alive, like, they want to work for him. Mm-hmm. Like, even though they're working for these other the private militia organizations they once they realize like oh the boss is alive like sweet we get to be part of his army like Mm -hmm. and so that that makes it seem a lot more believable that that you would just like fault in an enemy soldier and he would want to be on your team Mm -hmm. but it's like they're not really their enemy like they're they're being hired to do a job and then they realize like oh shit like the boss is going to be our boss now like sweet and so they still want you to beat them up even after you're (laughs) on your side yeah. yeah once they're on the base they're like you're like, hey, boss, let's trade. And then, like, you run and, like, start punching a dude. And then he's like, thanks for that, boss. And yeah. it's like, you know. So just... what we're saying is the boss has actually put together this giant a BDSM place. Yeah. yeah, but, I mean, I just I just picture them, like, going back to the barracks and being like, ah, I trained with a boss today. Yeah. And everyone being all jealous. Yeah. The, like a black eye. He's like, ah, oh, the boss gave me this. Like, no, he didn't. Like, <laughs> count the punches. <laughs> yeah, I clobbered a bunch of dudes. And then I was just walking around and it's like, base morality. Increase. Like, oh, <laughs> <Right? shit." laughs> but 
But Josh knocked a guy out, and then he's like, I wonder what would happen if I threw him off the edge into the water. I'm like, Josh, he'll die. And he's like, well, yeah, but I want to know what happens. They're like, no, no, don't do it. Don't do it. He'll die. And he goes, he picks the guy up and tosses him in the water. Then he gets a game over. Really? And they're like, boss, how could you do that to one of your own men? <laughs> and, and then he lost a bunch of progress. And he's like, oh, I can't believe I lost all that progress. I, like, I told him not to. Well, that's what you get for you, being vicious like that. It. Well, you got to find out, right? I mean, that's such a Josh thing to Or do more correctly, that's what you get for not saving right before you did something <laughs> stupid. Well, there, that's just it. There really isn't... Um, a full-fledged like save option that's the one thing about the game it's kind of all auto save yeah it's all auto save but once you figure it out like you realize there's certain places where it will auto save if you run through and you can start gaming that like when i'm trying to stealthily take over a base or whatever i like i'll get the guys kind of on the outskirt and then i'll like run out and auto save and Mm -hmm. then like run back and then even if i die like those guys on the outskirts are already taken care of. Mm-hmm. So. I feel like a lack of save function makes it less likely that I would want to experiment in a game like that. Uh, I'm the kind of guy, like, I can spend 40 minutes infiltrating a base, shit goes to hell, and I decide I don't want to kill everybody, I'll just restart this one, and spend another 40 minutes trying to get to the exact same spot with what I've already learned. And Yeah, know. I've been I've been exploiting it a lot. The ones, it's, oh, I don't know. It gets, it gets really hard toward the end, and, and so I've been, like, forced to But does it get it. as hard as a tower entrance in Shovel Knight. It gets pretty hard. I mean, I I've been I've been swearing a lot when mm-hmm. I'm playing. Quite often, I'm sitting at my computer at the kitchen table, uh, and I've been playing Shovel Knight, like I said. And my fiance came by and said, "Man, I forgot how nice and quiet it was when you were playing Skyrim." What do you mean? Every five minutes, you're cursing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. But it's not like super meat boy bad. (laughs) Mm. I hate hate to interrupt, but I have to draw attention to a sound that some of you may have just heard. And I believe it's Josh fiddling around with the cap on some sort of a bottle. Yeah, I'm drinking Snapple. I've recently discovered that I love Snapple Apple. Like I do. I've had Snapple before in the past. And it's never been something that like has blown my mind. But Mm -hmm. Mandy and I were out one day. We were like really thirsty. And it's like, oh, let's stop by this this gas station and pick something up and and so i was like oh let's try a snapple and like the whole time we were drinking these snapples it was i was like man is, is this what snapples always taste like this is this is fantastic it's it's so flavorful it's <laughs> it's, it's 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 so rich it's it's quenching my thirst in a very satisfying manner and it sounded like a snapple head but i was just like like just really like Snapple, and it, this is this is a, a discovery I've only recently made, and so mm-hmm. now I'm drinking Snapple every day. No, we we went to the drugstore to get more Snapple for Josh, and then he grabs his bottles, and we get in line. He's like, "Did you want any? Because both of these are for me." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bought two for myself and none for me. <laughs> I didn't want her to get the wrong impression. <laughs> he's a horrible boyfriend. No. Yeah, he's double-fisted that Snapple. But did you prove you were a man by crushing the bottle on your forehead <laughs> afterwards? Not, not that kind of Snapple drinker. <laughs> Aw, Snapple. When people around me are really interested in something, I start looking it up obsessively because I really like knowing weird trivia mm-hmm. about things. So I started looking up a bunch of Snapple trivia, and I started finding out how many of the Snapple facts have been like completely debunked. And aren't even a little true. Mm-hmm. Like you just you like can't what? trust. Like they tried to say a duck's quack can't echo, and a duck's quack can echo. It's just very hard to distinguish. Or they said like caller ID is banned in California, and it's not. It's just there was some talk about laws banning caller ID in California in the nineties. And then I was reading about like all this stuff. Snapple had sponsored, like they put millions of dollars into New York City public schools and were trying to make it the official drink of New York. They, you know, if they did that by putting millions of dollars into the schools, I'm almost okay with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, there are worse things you could be drinking than Snapple. I'm sure Josh would agree. And, and, yeah. and, there, and there they were trying to give money to public education. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's better than a lot of people would do. Yeah, Pepsi practically sponsored the high school that I went to. Yeah, I think Coke sponsored my high school. Yeah. We must have had rival high mm-hmm. schools. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Go Lancers. <laughs> we were you the Cougars. Son of a bitch. So, how many facts are there? 
Do you know? Uh, over 900. There's over 1,000. What, what, what snapple fact do you have right yeah, now? Yeah, hey, let's play a game. And over 9,000! Real fact, 957. In only 7.6 billion years, the sun will reach its maximum size and will shine 3,000 times brighter. Are they talking about the heat death of the universe? Uh... In, your, in a bottle of snapple? <laughs> <laughs> Not, that one's not debunked. Whoa. What a, what a dangerous future we have Whoa. awaiting us. Snapple in, just... you know, some millions of years. Yeah. It's going to be it's gonna be hot. You better stock up on Snapple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of um, the universe, uh, not so much its impending doom, but uh, basically the grandeur of it all. I hear there's a, a No Man's Sky event. Josh, you uh, check that out? Yeah. On October 3rd, there was a No Man's Sky event in New York. I kind of had my hopes up that they're going to be announcing a release date, but they didn't. Yeah, of course not. Sean Marie from Hello Games did a bit on the Late Show with Stephen Colbert uh, the night before, and you know a lot of people were saying you know they they didn't announce a release date there, and that would have been a better place to announce one. Uh, at the event in New York, though, Sean Marie did say the release date was procedurally generated. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I have a feeling that game is probably never going to come out. (laughs) But, uh, no, I mean, he mostly was talking about, like, his game development process and his history as a developer. And he said the two biggest gaming influences on No Man's Sky were Journey, which Mm -hmm. makes sense, and then Peggle. (laughs) Oh, wow, really? (laughs) He said the thing is that Peggle is just constantly rewarding the player. And so he wanted to have the same thing for No Man's Sky. So it makes sense, but it's a pretty goofy pull quote. I think that this is less of a game and more of just a series of uh, trailers and fake gameplay videos. (laughs) There there was a new trailer, the No Man's Sky Event, so. All that really is is just a procedurally generated trailer machine. <laughs> <laughs> and if I played modern games that weren't Skyrim, I would actually be really interested in playing No Man's Sky. So, like, one of the cool things about No Man's Sky is Sean Murray is constantly comparing it to Minecraft. And I think it's more of like a, it's less of a gameplay thing and more of like uh, the mentality behind. Minecraft is is a mentality that we really want to encourage and expand upon and uh he's he said some things about how like he grew up playing Mario but today's kids are pl- are growing up playing Minecraft and so so gamers from our generation have a different expectation for what a video game should be than you know the up and coming generation and so he thinks that's going to really widely impact how games are perceived in the next couple decades. Something like Mario has a very clear objective. Mm-hmm. You know, it's get it's get from point A to point B. So many of the games from the past three decades are, you know, get from point A to point B. Mm-hmm. Or here's your objective. Do this. Go here. The game's always telling you what to do. Minecraft never tells you what to do. Mm-hmm. It just plops you down in an open world and go explore, build, create, survive, do the stuff you want to do, mm-hmm. you know, create your own project. It's not telling you, hey, go out and build a pyramid. It's like, oh, hey, I think I'm going to build a pyramid today. And so you just go build one or like, oh, hey, I just stumbled upon a cave. I want to explore it. It's not like quest go explore the cave it's just mm-hmm. like if you want to explore the cave go explore the cave and mm-hmm. i uh, i found a witch's hut one time in minecraft and proceeded to build a castle on the back of the witch's hut that had a tower that was 250 blocks high. Uh, and then at the top of that 250 block high tower, I proceeded to plant a flower garden because mm. that's that's where flowers belong, 250 blocks high in the sky. Absolutely. Yeah, where no one can see them. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think uh, this actually is a good point uh, to uh, call a... Uh File on the play, throw my flag down. We're going to take a break. Uh, when we come back, I think we're going to dive much, much deeper into the realm of Minecraft. Before we go, however, as always, I'd like to thank uh, 2XAA Wheelie banging out the tunes, yo. Retroevolve.com, you know, geekparty.com. Uh, we're on iTunes. But we're also on uh, halfglassgaming.com, the greatest website um, possibly ever created. Anyways, when we get back, we're going to get into it. Minecraft style. Boom! (laughs) 
Damn, back from the break. Breakneck speed. I got whiplash. What? Let's get into it. We're going to craft some mine and mine some craft. Who's got some stories? What I usually end up doing in Minecraft is um, I will end up building some big, large structure, and then I'll get bored, and then I'll just wander for a while, and then I'll stop playing for a week or two, and then, you know, go back, make a new world, build a new structure, and, you know, it just mm -hmm. it keeps cycling like that. I have two platinum trophies in Minecraft. First of all, I got all the achievements in the Xbox 360 version, and then I started playing the PS3 version, and I got the platinum trophy, and then I started playing the PS4 version, and I got the platinum trophy. I mean, I'm 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 easily well over 1,500 hours in Minecraft. Some is. of us don't need trophies to play Minecraft. Mm. Oh, I love trophies. Actually, I uh, I don't currently have Minecraft installed on my computer, but that's because I have it on my game band which is a wearable piece of wearable technology with a USB port. You plug it into your computer and it comes installed with uh, various adventure maps and you can just play Minecraft right off the wristband. Mm. The idea being that you can go to, you know, if you're like at the library or at a friend's house or whatever, you don't have to have your computer to play your account of Minecraft. It's on the game band. So you could just play Minecraft anytime you're on a computer that can run it. Mm. Mandy, what's your uh, level of addiction? Uh, for me lately, Minecraft is just pain and suffering. <laughs> Just everything that could implausibly go wrong for me does go wrong. Like, I'll be on this big track and get, like, a bunch of really valuable materials and be heading back to the town, and suddenly I'll get struck by lightning and one hit kill. What? And I've gotten yes. struck by lightning at least three times. What? Which, is, Never. which is Which is incredibly rare from what I can see, but it just, it happens to me. How did you get hit by lightning and three no, like, times? I looked it up, and it can happen, but it's supposed to be super rare, but, you know, that's what happens in a completely random game is mm -hmm. some one individual person can have terrible luck that nobody else would have. In my 1,500 plus hours of Minecraft, I've never once been struck by lightning. Yeah, neither yeah, have I. Nor have I. I've never seen anything struck by lightning. No, there yeah, was I one have. time twice in one night that I got struck by lightning, right? Yeah. I had a glitch with a baby zombie that existed during the day and couldn't be killed. That and that really? thing killed me probably five times, but that was right close to the town, so I didn't oh, really man. lose anything. My cows kill themselves <laughs> repeatedly. Wow. <laughs> Like, they're obsessed with killing themselves. At first, there were torches all around the town to protect the town from monsters and spiders, so they'd walk into the torches. Okay, that's user error. Move the torches up. The cows would jump on top of each other to kill themselves <laughs> with the torches. Yeah, it's what? like double-decker cows, just, just to, like, one cow on to riding on top of the other cow just so he can hit the torch and be wow. set on fire. I, I, I had a cow jump into a well, and it just wouldn't leave the well because it, it, it kept swimming. It wasn't ready to go, but it wouldn't climb out. And so finally, like, I opened up the well and got the cow, and a baby cow dove in oh, and geez. killed itself. Oh, geez. So I started calling it the voluntary cow extinction movement oh my God. because they just did not want to exist they knew what would awaited them i was going to kill them and use their leather <laughs> and what was so, it that that you got that name from oh uh, the, there's a thing called the voluntary human extinction movement that it's an organization that they think nobody should have children and they should just the human race should voluntarily choose extinction and let itself die out mm. so i called it the voluntary cow extinction movement but i mean i built a suicide prevention pen and i even made a sign outside <laughs> that said cow suicide prevention pen <laughs> and like you'd open up the door and there'd just be leather and meat oh my god <laughs> how do they manage to kill themselves i don't know i just have the worst minecraft <laughs> luck possible no wow. matter what like and Josh, if when we play together, he's like, oh, you can have, like, this cheap sword. I'm not going to give you a good sword. Because he knows, he knows yeah. just bad things are going Jeez. to happen. I have the worst terrible luck. I once, uh, right when the um, creative mode kind of was released for the consoles, I spent about two hours building this magnificent roller coaster. And it was encased in this dome that was pitch black. So I used black wool and... It had fire in it and shit, and I had managed to avoid any sort of possibility where fire could set this wool on fire. And then it rains, lightning strikes, the whole thing just blows <laughs> up. I mean, it was marvelous. One of the things I like about Minecraft is that it can be very easy to play. Mm -hmm. And that was a huge benefit to me about... 
a year and a half ago, due to life situations, I essentially had a mental breakdown. Uh, I was near suicidal. Uh, but Minecraft gave me something to do. Literally, all I could do was get up. I had to be carted to work so that I could continue paying the bills. Uh, and when I would get home, I would just sit in front of the computer and play Minecraft, which sounds really pathetic and depressing, but also it's notable, Minecraft worked. I'm still here. I didn't kill myself. I could just play Minecraft. And, you know, I could build something in Minecraft, and there it was. I built something. I could feel like I had done something, even if it was only digital. You know, I built a house. I dug a cave. I, you know, did whatever. And I could go back and look at that whenever I wanted to, going, okay, this is something that I did. And that literally helped me get through that time uh, where I otherwise may have wound up no longer being here. So I'm, like, personally really grateful that Minecraft exists, because otherwise I might not. Mm -hmm. And that's a really cool thing about setting your own goals and creating your own projects. You know, no one's going to tell you what you're supposed to be doing in Minecraft. You just do what you want and you've got so much freedom. It's like just giving you a digital box of Legos and saying, like, go nuts, create and survive and explore. And mm -hmm. and not only that, it's easier than Legos because you don't have to, like, actually put stuff together all you have to do is sit there and push arrow keys and click your mouse. And so, like, the fact that it's so easy, but you can actually look at these amazing things that you can accomplish is really helpful for people who, you know, might have a problem actually having the energy to do anything else. Mm -hmm. And I think that free play in Minecraft is eventually going to be really valuable. There are lots of people who will decry the fact that kids today don't want to go play outside and want to spend all their time playing video games. But there have been studies done and the type of free play that Minecraft offers is the same types of benefits that a child would normally get from free play where they just sit down and play with toys because the game gives you so much freedom. Mm -hmm. Playing Minecraft can improve language development, can improve overall cognitive function. They did a study where they compared children who watch TV in their free time to children who played Minecraft in their free time, and the children who played Minecraft had better scores in tests, had better overall performance in school, were better at reading. Mm -hmm. The kids who played Minecraft instead of watching TV were healthier, like they had a healthier weight and they ate better diets and they had lower cholesterol. And I, I don't really get why unless clicking a mouse to punch trees burns calories, <laughs> but it's pretty interesting. Uh, Minecraft is also being used in school by teachers mm -hmm. with mods to teach kids coding because the basics of coding are really in Minecraft anyways and like so they have mods where like when kids craft they basically actually have to code the stuff. Hmm. It's super interesting too and it's mm -hmm. used for Bible studies even like people <laughs> can use Minecraft for anything. Yeah the Bible study thing is actually really great. There's you can find YouTube videos of it and it's a guy in Minecraft going like Hi, I'm Nehemiah, and these Babylonians around me might look like zombies, but but they're really Babylonians. No, I guess it's a guy who's a youth minister at a church, and he does that for the kids. Like, he sends them Minecraft YouTube videos for, for weekly devotionals. Yeah, it's pretty great. On a forum I'm on, somebody was talking about having set up a Minecraft group for like 10 year olds uh you know at a public library because his kid was 10 and so that was the the idea mm -hmm. give the kids something to do so the idea was that each kid would have a set amount of time to play with with the minecraft world and you know eventually that he would just see what these kids built so after the first day of doing this it was like an hour and a half, there were five kids. Uh, he took a screenshot of what was there, and as you might expect, what we saw was all the trees on fire and made out of wood the word poop. What a great kid. <laughs> right? <laughs> However, after two or three sessions, the kids started building houses. They started, you know, building buildings. Mm -hmm. 
So, like, kids are kids. They're going to do what kids do. They're going to spell poop out of blocks of wood. Mm -hmm. But as you let them be creative and have the freedom to be creative, they're going to be creative. Yeah, it's like it reinforces, like, um, exploration and kind of a reward system. And, and the more you understand what you can do, it's like, oh, yeah, I could write poop, but, uh, man, I, yeah, I can maybe build a castle. and Right. You know, and then you're like, ah, this doesn't quite look like a castle. Maybe it's too small. Maybe I go bigger. You know, it's like, how do you make a, a cake? Well, I harvested some sugar from cane and, you know, wheat and bread. And it's just each system kind of feeds into a larger system. It may not be easy necessarily to accomplish that thing, but once you do, it's kind of like, oh, cool, you know. I have leather and I have paper and I just made a book and I make wood and I have a bookshelf. Yeah, Minecraft is just this really interesting game that really, I feel like it changed the nature of video games from that point on. Because it was one of those games that like nobody knew they wanted, but everybody fucking wanted it. Like, right. If, if you talked to people before Minecraft came out, you know, they would have given you the standard AAA stuff or, you know, maybe I want a role playing game with more choices or a little more exploration or whatever. But nobody would have said, give me Dungeons and Dragons Lego edition in digital form. Choice is always a tricky thing in gaming because the choices that developers want to give you are almost always binary. And it's like, oh, you can choose the good path or the bad path, or you can do this good action or this bad action, or you've got two dialogue options to choose how you're going to respond to this NPC. Minecraft just throws all of that stuff out of the window. And it's just like, no, you can do anything. Like you're not making binary choices. You're just, you're making like, genuine choices about what you want to do and and then there are the mods there's one mod that actually lets you build a spaceship and go to other planets which is just fucking amazing to me you know there's mods that add different kinds of building material so like not only is minecraft itself this amazing toolbox uh, but also, people are adding mods to make it an even more amazing toolbox. There's a mod that gives you the the portal gun from Portal, and uh, it's incredible. Me, not at all. There's all sorts. There's mods that uh, let you carry a torch with you, which you can't actually do in the normal game. There were at one point, um, Notch was uh, Notch, the creator of Minecraft was talking about replacing all of the torches with lanterns. And I'm wondering if if he was thinking about that functionality, about carrying it around. And so essentially, a torch would have been an item that would wear down eventually. And then a lantern would be like the torches are now, that they, they would just last forever. Right. And so for all players who had torches already in their games, those would just be converted to lanterns. But from like that point on, they would have to like build lanterns but that never ended up happening and now notch has sold it and is you know richer than god <laughs> yeah notch i mean notch outbid jay-z on a on a home yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> There's this argument about how Minecraft is basically Infiniminer. Minecraft was inspired by a game called Infiniminer. If you play Infiniminer, you can definitely see the sim similarities. It's a voxel-based game where you, you know, mine stuff in a randomly generated world. The focus was completely different, though. It was it was a multiplayer competitive game where the goal was to mine more gold and uh, I think there was a couple other types of resource you could mine and your goal was to mine more than the opposing team and then there was a sandbox mode and there was the ability to like kind of build some things but you were so limited in what you could build and dig and stuff. I feel pretty bad for the guy. For one, his name is Zachary Barth, which just sounds like Zach Braff. It's way too close. <laughs> That's gotta be unfortunate for him. And I mean, a month after he put out that game, his entire source code was leaked and dumped 
jumped on the internet. He had envisioned this world where he got to change and grow the game based on how players responded to it and building this big community around it, but that never happened because everybody just started making their own versions of the game using his source code. And then Minecraft came, which didn't use Infiniminer's source code. Well, another one of the, the problems that happened when his source code leaked was that um, the multiplayer servers were were completely unbalanced because people were able to dig into the source code and create a bunch of cheats and things and they were able to manipulate the games in ways that completely unbalanced it. And to his credit, Zach Barth has been a really good sport about it. He's even said that Minecraft should really be its own genre of game, which I think is true. I mean, mine-like, craft-like, I don't know, but it's definitely inspired a genre that really didn't exist before. The creators of Terraria have made the argument, like, Minecraft isn't a game, it's a genre. and Because Terraria was getting accused of being a Minecraft clone. and It is, a little. Yeah, it definitely is, but not in a bad way. I think they put a creative spin on the Minecraft idea. I mean, Minecraft is inspired by roguelikes, and really there's an entire genre of games that are just ripoffs of Rogue. So it's kind of fitting, really. I think the things that made Minecraft important were the things that Minecraft added to the Infiniminer formula. Minecraft added the whole crafting element. There wasn't crafting in an Infiniminer, and the, the crafting element is like, you know, farming wood and turning it into lumber and then building houses from that and mining ore and then melting that and forming ingots and then using that to craft stuff. Um, there's a whole, there's like layers and layers and layers of systems on top of the in Infiniminer formula. And one of the most important things I think Minecraft did was it's created this world that's infinite. Even though Infina is the first part of Infiniminer, it, it was a very small, limited area that was randomly generated that you could dig in because it was a, it was created to be a multiplayer game where you had a certain amount of time to see how much ore you could mine, and then the round ended and it would randomly generate a new map for you to to play with. At, at one time, the idea was that Minecraft was about eight times the size of the Earth if you randomly generated a full world. I think that was just a limitation of the game engine itself. And I know as you got to, like further out toward the edge of the world, the edge of what the game wanted to generate for you, like you would start finding glitches and things, but it was really difficult to get out that far. I, I one time in Minecraft decided to just start going. And for literally 50 in-game days, I just kept going. And it was, it was nifty to just see all the changes in terrain just as I was continuing to go straight. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I went over water and a water guardian electrocuted me to death because fuck them, I guess. Mm. Uh, Time Magazine actually did an article called, it was something like four ways that Minecraft actually didn't change the gaming industry or something like that. And the author tries to say that Minecraft, that Minecraft was just a unique thing that wasn't able to really influence gaming at all. So. Right. That's why there's No Man's Sky. That's why there's Ark. This article came out in May of 2013, and so maybe they hadn't felt the effects of it so hard, but I think the author of the article just wasn't paying attention because Minecraft already was changing a lot of things. It changed It changed so much about the, the gaming industry. It showed people, uh, developers and publishers, that um, gamers don't want to be told what to do all the time. Like They want to create their own projects. They want to do their own thing. Sandbox games were a thing before Minecraft, but Minecraft took a completely fresh approach to the sandbox and said, hey, let's not, you know, let's not do a GTA where there's a, a story and you've got a bunch of side stuff. Like, let's just make the sandbox the game. As we said toward the beginning of this episode, No Man's Sky is a huge example of of a game that was directly influenced by that mentality. And I mean, even before that, you had things like Terraria, which was a fantastic game, which was clearly influenced by Minecraft. Starbound, which was another really fantastic game, clearly influenced by Minecraft and Terraria. And one of the things that author claims, which is really funny, is like, pixel art was cool before Minecraft. And it's like, well, 
pixel art isn't one of the important things that Minecraft did. <laughs> Minecraft, Minecraft blew the roof off of what indie developers could hope to attain. It created, you know, this, this feeling of like, oh, hey, I can make an indie game and still become a millionaire, which was pretty rare before Minecraft. It happened. Like Minecraft blew completely the, the ceiling off of that. You know, Notch is a billionaire now. You know, the whole like Steam's early access thing, like Minecraft popularized that model of like, let's release a paid beta and players will pay the beta. And as players are paying it, they'll be paying our bills and we can keep making it and yada, yada, yada. Minecraft proved that that could be a successful business model. I'm not sure Minecraft was the first game to ever do that, but it really, you know, popularized that as a business model and showed a lot of people that, hey, this is this can be a successful business model. Well, and like I said, it really gave people something they didn't know they wanted. Uh, there was this study uh, that found that when people were asked what kind of coffee they wanted, they would usually say, you know, I want a rich, dark roast. But when they actually had the option to get coffee, they would get something kind of watery and milky. People say what they want, but that's not always what they want. So, like, at the time when Minecraft came out, I feel like Minecraft just came in and went, no, look, gamers want shit that you guys aren't thinking about. I think people don't understand coffee. <laughs> well, hey, there's also that. That's actually from a TED Talk on spaghetti sauce that you we were <laughs> quoting. It's a TED Talk from Malcolm Gladwell on spaghetti sauces. Okay. And the mistake that the food industry did about focus testing what people wanted in spaghetti sauce because people can't say what they want. Right. People will often say something that they think they want, but that's not actually what they want. Or, you know, they might want what they say they want, but they will also want this other thing that they hadn't even thought was possible because, you know, that's not what had been available before. And when you offer it to them, they're going, oh, yeah, this is neat. I do like this. And that's kind of what Minecraft did. And Minecraft also, like, reached out to new demographics of, of gamers and things, too. And, like... I went up for Thanksgiving and I brought my Xbox 360 because I was I was still um, working in games journalism at the time and I got a review copy of Minecraft and I had to review it over Thanksgiving and the game wasn't out yet. I mean, it was it was out on PC but this was the like the console release. And uh, I got it a couple weeks earlier, a week or two early. And I was playing it before launch and my mom kept like poking her head in the room and being like what what is this? And my mom has never shown interest in a video game ever. And she kind of like sat down on the couch next to me and was watching me. And she's like, oh, wait, so you you just built that thing, like that house. I was like, yeah, I just built it. And she's like, oh, and what's what's that? And I was kind of explaining to her like what I was doing and, and how everything worked and how like, yeah, I can build whatever I want. I just have to get the resources and this is how I get the resources. And I was like kind of walking her through it. And she was just like fascinated the next day, because I, I spent a few days, like I spent four or five days up at my parents' place and um, I woke up the next morning and I was like kind of just groggily wandering around and my mom's like, hey, so are you going to play that Minecraft game? I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind uh, sitting down and watching you play that for a while again. <laughs> One of the, the funny things about my early copy was that um, some kid kept bugging me because I was, I was plugged into the internet. And some kid kept like being like, "Hey, how'd you get Minecraft? <laughs> I, w- I want to get Minecraft." I was like, "It's not out yet, dude." And my mom thought it was hilarious because I was kind of like trolling this kid a little bit. It was like, like you uh, are kind of a dick, <laughs> right?" And like my mom, th- this was like my mom's introduction to the concept of like trolling, <laughs> and it was so hilarious because she was just so fascinated by all of this stuff. It blew her mind. Minecraft actually gave me and my stepson something to do together i i'm of course you know i was a band geek in high school uh my stepson is one of the popular kids he's not playing football he's in dance but you know he's popular he's everything i wasn't in high school so we don't have a whole lot of stuff that we like together but 
we both like Minecraft, so, you know, it gave us something to connect with, something that we had in common that we could talk about. And that's, like, you know, with Josh and his mom and with me and my sister, like, Minecraft appeals to so many different kind of people for so many different reasons that I feel like it's one of those things that can actually, like, we can use to kind of come together and have a common ground. Like, you know, I like building 250 uh, block high towers with flower gardens. You know, my son likes finding these mods and exploring these deep caves. Josh likes doing whatever he likes doing in Minecraft. Mandy likes getting struck by lightning, apparently. <laughs> uh, like, everybody likes their own part of it, but it's all part of the game. We all have the things we like and we can all enjoy them together. And I feel like that's really the charm of Minecraft. Minecraft came out, like, the Minecraft beta came out in an era in which gaming was really stagnating. And there was this, this idea in, in the AAA studios of the more ubiquitous we make our game, the more generic we make it, the more people will like it and the more copies will sell. And so everything was kind of aping Call of Duty. We had so, like, you know, there was the joke about how everything in the gaming industry was all of a sudden, uh, tan and brown first person shooter and there was you know some truth to that uh because call of duty was so successful everybody wanted to do call of duty without innovating anything minecraft totally flew in the face of that and was like no people want choice this game appeals to so many people because it lets them do what they want it lets different types of people different personality types all enjoy different things and all get something different out of it and i think that was hugely influential sure yeah minecraft is fantastic did it ruin a massage i was getting once yeah <laughs> okay i spent 35 minutes of a 50-minute massage, trying to put my finger on where the hell the ambient music that the woman is pumping through her uh, iPod dock, uh, where, where I know that from until I finally said, oh, of course, it's fucking the Minecraft theme. What the, <laughs> the hell kind of a business are you running here? <laughs> and she was crafting mines all over my sore body. <laughs> yeah, Minecraft is incredibly influential. And, you know, it's one of those things. It's like, I think the guy just made a game uh, that he wanted to play. And it turns out that the entire rest of the world also wanted to play it. So whether you're Mo Yang or Bro Shang, go out and enjoy some Minecraft. Peace be with you, my brother. One day, I was looking sad when I went in to take a drink to the king. So the king asked me, Nehemiah, why do you look so sad? <laughs>